Ken Trahan with Lenny Van Gilder. It's our First NBC Bank weekend review brought to you by First NBC Bank. First NBC Bank is a proud sponsor of SportsNola.com. Well, the NBA All-Star Game would be top of the news, and understandably so, especially when your star player gets MVP. But that was usurped by a huge story that happened after the game, late at night, which I'm sure you've probably heard about by now. The New Orleans Pelicans have agreed to trade a bunch of assets, some arguably assets, in return for a true asset, the best center in the NBA, DeMarcus Cousins. Of course, it's pending leave approval. You expect that will be the case and expect something to be done by Wednesday formally with the Pelicans. That said, well, Lenny, this is a blockbuster. I mean, nobody saw this coming. The rumors started on All-Star Sunday, and then, of course, it happened quickly. Frankly, I'm surprised, and frankly, I'm pleasantly surprised because I think it's a bold move by the Pelicans. There's obvious risk involved, but you're getting the best of the best. He's the best center in the NBA. No doubt about that, uh, especially with all of the skill sets that he brings. And not a lot of players that play the center position are really good scorers. You haven't seen that, you know, in a game that's really moved to the perimeter. You know, we're not in the era of, you know, Kareem Abdul-Jabbar and 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 the like. You know, many many years ago of you know Wilt Chamberlain of. You know, even Bill Russell wasn't a great scorer. I mean, we don't have those kind of big guys in the NBA anymore. So these are real commodities when you can get them. And and by all accounts, the Pelicans are the winners in this deal. They did not have to give up Drew Holiday. Uh, they did not have to give up a second first-round pick. Uh, this sounds like, at least on paper, as if the Pelicans may have really pulled off a coup in this deal. I couldn't agree more. Risk, obviously, there. Upside, we just talked about. Downside, the most bombastic mercurial player in the league. Routinely leads the league in technicals. Can blow up at any time. Can have a tremendous impact on a team negatively if that happens. One more year left on a contract. Could you get him signed long-term? And how much is that going to cost when you already have a max player in Anthony Davis? So, obviously, there's risk involved and there's potential downside. But I think... The positives here clearly outweigh the negatives. I agree. I think it's a risk worth taking. And and look, you mentioned just his his the way he plays the game so emotionally, and that is a concern. He has already exceeded uh, the 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 magic number of seventeen in terms of technical fouls. So every two technicals he gets going forward, he is suspended for a game. He's been averaging about a T every three games. So if he maintains that pace, is he sitting every sixth game? That's you know, that's concerning because you're going to get a guy for 25 games this year and he might be sitting four of them because of suspension if he maintains that current pace. Hopefully, a new environment, maybe he's on his best behavior. You know, let, let's see how it all plays out. But the other thing to remember is this. While that, while that can happen, officials know who DeMarcus Cousins is. And the, the, the slightest look the wrong way with your eye and he may be getting teed up even if it's not deserved. No doubt. And then when people talk about Davis and Cousins meshing, they talk about the Kentucky connection, but they've never played together. So it's going to take time, and people need to understand that. There's going to be an adjustment here, and there's going to have to be some deferring and understanding of how people play. But I agree with you. Not giving up Holiday was key, and their chances of keeping him now, I think, grew exponentially. And then secondly, uh, being able to only give up one number one draft pick was fine because, quite frankly, with all due respect, to Galloway, Heald, and Evans. Uh, those were disposable commodities in the sense of, were you going to win a championship with them? The answer is no. Buddy Heald is the one you got to question. Absolutely. Because you've had him for just 50-something games. And, you know, look, it's in my mind, he's a guy who's been very inconsistent. Could he turn into something? He, you know, guys in their rookie years in the NBA, everyone is not LeBron James and comes in and is immediately a star. You know, you, you look at guys, you know, I'll give you a classic example. David West was a bit player his first year in New Orleans. Yeah, after it, and, and, you know, he had the the, NBA, the college career that really most compared to Buddy Heald in terms of what he did before coming to New Orleans. And then in his second and third year is when he really blossomed. So, you, you know, are, are you giving up on a guy there too soon? Perhaps, but I think it's worth the risk to be able to get a guy like this. And look, I think the biggest thing is, You've basically been playing Anthony Davis at center for the last two and a half months now, and he can't handle that kind of beating down there. He is a power forward. He needs to be playing, you know, a little bit away from the basket. And, you know, I think him at the high post and Cousins down low, man, that, that, is, uh, that is awfully appealing to be able to see how teams will be able to defend that.
by any measure, the All-Star Game was a success. The All-Star Weekend was a success in New Orleans. And, of course, it was capped off by Anthony Davis getting the MVP. Look, it's a coronation. The players decide who's going to get MVP by who they give the ball to. And he just dunked after dunked after dunk. We get that. It's not a game. We get that. But still, I think it speaks volumes about the measure of respect that Davis has commanded around the league, that they would defer to him like that. Absolutely. And look, in your hometown, if you will, or your, your, your home city where you play, it's, it's a good thing. But everybody doesn't get that. This doesn't happen every year that the, the, the best player on the team, wherever the game happens to be played, is suddenly the MVP. It's happened four or five times in the past. Guys like Kobe and Shaq. And you know you want to go back to Tom Chambers in Seattle when the Sonics still had a, uh, still had a team. But it's you're right. It's it's refreshing to see just I think how well liked Anthony Davis is in this league, how well respected his game is in the league, and uh, as you mentioned in your 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 review of the trade, I mean he is a guy who is I don't think we've seen his best as of yet. No, I really don't. High school sports and of course the soccer finals are now set. Quite a few local teams there. A couple that were surprised that aren't there as well. But that's coming up this week at Tad Gormley Stadium. Boys playoff brackets announced Monday. Check out sportsnola.com for that. Girls playoffs continuing. Track and field indoor championships crowned this past week, and it's a dizzying time in prep sports. Yeah, by the way, sportsnola.com Wednesday evening we will have a live girls. Uh, high school playoff basketball action division one quarterfinal between Chappelle and Dominican from uptown so check that out Wednesday at six at sportsnola.com should be a good one a rematch game and a district game obviously played a couple of times during the year so we look forward to that LSU recruiting they get three evangel players committing to them over the weekend uh, and that's obviously significant evangel a division one state champion and a lot of really good players there and of course it's early lenny we don't know about commitments holding but we'll see lsu also offered a bevy of other players including uh, houston from john Errett, chase from rommel among others so and these are guys that in some cases are already committed to others right and look they're, they're junior day this weekend so you see a lot of that kind of activity you're getting guys on campus that's why you saw those commits at least it's not a year until they can sign. Now we're realistically we're looking at ten months once all of that becomes official later this spring to be looking at a at a December signing period for those guys. No doubt, it's going to be fun to watch, and of course we'll be waiting to hear from Demarcus Cousins. At this point, it looks like Wednesday is what we're told that we'll probably have a chance uh, to hear from him, which is of course in conjunction with when they play their first game after the break against the Houston Rockets. Right, Thursday night, first game back. I gotta believe that's going to be as as highly anticipated a game involving the Pelicans probably since Anthony Davis's first game here. Uh, you know, and I, I would even, you know, the, yeah, you, you snuck in and maybe the 82nd game of the season a couple of years ago when the Pelicans got into playoffs on the final day. But this is going to be big. I'm going to be interested to see what the NBA TV partners do. Are you going to see the Pelicans show up a couple more times on a national TV schedule perhaps now? You know, this is a team that, Probably outside of the of the Warriors, with all the the you know the great assets they have, you know, in terms of teams with young talent, you got to put them right alongside some of the best teams in the league. Agreed. That's our first NBC Bank weekend review, brought to you by First NBC Bank, proud sponsor of SportsNola.com. Have a great week, Lenny. See you later this week. You all have a great week as well. We'll talk to you later in the week. Until then, God bless.